We've come a long way to show and explain to you where the nobility of this car, born and bred in Modena, comes from. And now that we're almost there, we need to go far away, geographically speaking this time, to appreciate an icy cold and yet crucial development phase. Asciutto. No matter how dry or wet, icy or snowy the road is, the car is just amazing, and now we have evidence of it. Well, I hope you're able to understand and share my excitement today. From the plains of Modena to Livigno, an altitude of 2,000 meters. Livigno is one of the many winter locations, apart from the Nordic countries, where we usually run the prototype tests of the Maserati MC20. Just like the one I'm driving now with a smile from ear to ear that you'll just have to trust is under my face mask. It's more or less the same smile I've had even before getting on board the MC20, when I was given the chance to experience and explore the Lavinio circuit on a vehicle that's just perfect for such conditions. This demands traction, ground clearance, and an Italian V8 that naturally produces an avalanche of excitement. All such sensations are generated by the MC20, thanks to its design which has been entirely reviewed and still has top efficiency. Weight has been amazingly distributed on this car. It's just fantastic when used on the road, but especially when used on the track. And it achieves impressive lap times. The balance is so good that it becomes an unparalleled experience. On the 305mm rear tyres, just to give you an idea, it really made my day when I ran over the kerbs and was able to enjoy all of their grip. But in such conditions, they do demand you drive in a different style. And I'd already appreciated the suspension when running over the kerbs at the Modena racetrack. Well, here as well, they are wonderfully performing in mid mode, which has been judged as the most suitable one on the Lavinio icy racetrack. This mode is supported by the weight of the engine. It's placed right where it's most needed. Depending on the amount of power needed, on acceleration, on steering angle, on selected mode, the electronic differential will always find the perfect balance. Consider that it's set up to block up to 4,800 newtons or more. So, in order to enter corners with a higher accuracy, the E-diff is on and it turns off when coming out of a corner at full throttle. It turns off to give rear wheels the utmost traction. I'm now at a high altitude driving this brightly coloured and amazing MC20 prototype, and it's thanks to specific conditions of the racetrack under which test drivers can find the perfect tuning for the electronic component, one of the most delicate and sophisticated elements in any super sports car. But I won't be the one to explain to you such things in detail. If what is being tested is an MC20 in extreme circuit conditions, then Marcello Gallo must be around. Marcello's presence is crucial, as you probably noticed, both when giving a demonstration of the car's performance in the circuit and after the driving session, when we need to collect and analyze data in the workshop, quantifying the intensity and the timing of the electronics to achieve perfect fine tuning. For example, the action of the traction control and of the stability control shouldn't be neither too rough nor too smooth. If too smooth, it wouldn't be timely enough, and it wouldn't control the vehicle. As far as the, MT as far as the MC20 is concerned, we decided to match every drive mode with specific features, especially the traction control and the ESC, whose function is to work together with other systems like the brake torque vectoring, the engine, the transmission, the suspension. And now, a comment from my side. You learn a lot by participating in a project like this over a long time because it's the only way to actually see which modifications are made and how the car is improved throughout the process. In my example, for instance, by comparing this test with the one I did with Landini months ago, I can feel how the car now displays a front anti-roll bar with a lower section that makes it much easier to handle. A further update is related to the rear springs. They're now slightly harder, and I confess I'd spend the entire winter with the MC20 if I could. But the time has come for another test phase. 
It's named Altitude and Cold Weather Test because traveling thousands of kilometers in such conditions is crucial. It's crucial if you want to fine tune the details. And if you're ready, let the new test begin. They say the early bird gets the worm, and it's true today. The early morning of this second day of testing at minus 12 degrees C proves to be crucial. As the car adjusts to the weather conditions, all of its components are constantly being monitored. When we started the engine this morning, we had a little problem with the transmission calibration. Because as I told you yesterday, depending on temperatures and altitude, the transmission needs some time to adjust and Obviously, the material's expansion varies with such temperatures. What happened this morning? In a few words, the transmission hadn't adjusted to such a low temperature yet. So the reason why the vehicle turned off when we accelerated in reverse is that the clutch was released too suddenly. These data will help us implement and correct the software in its next versions. On the road, we also appreciate the different drive modes and their full potential. The GT is the benchmark in terms of comfort, and the E-Diff helps you drive as fluently as possible. Nevertheless, it must be said, the balance setup was not like this before. There is a slight difference. The angle of convergence of the rear wheel has been modified in order to remove some weight from the suspensions, whose ultimate goal is to help the car sail over the bumps, especially the smallest ones, the so-called high frequency bumps. In addition, we also wanted a more progressive and smoother power output in sport drive mode. The result? The car is not that rough anymore. I mean, you will no longer experience sudden acceleration on this car. It is rather far more progressive so to make the life of clients easier, also when driving in standard conditions. But if you have a more aggressive driving style on the road, then your favorite drive mode would be the one that Marcello is using right now. We use the Manatino dial to switch to sport drive mode. And this is your favorite mode on the road, isn't it? Exactly, because I picture the client using this drive mode right in these conditions on mountain roads, where they expect the engine to be prompt when coming out of a corner the transmission response to be more aggressive, and yet not too rough. But the same client also wants to feel safe when the road is icy or wet like today. They want to rely on car controls. Look, suspensions are now harder, but above all, please observe the different way they now act on the roll control. I'm saying that roll speed is flatter. It takes more time to reach the roll highest degree. If you focus on the rear end, you will feel a rougher car than the GT. Don't you notice that in turns? You can perceive this roughness. It's what we call tingling. The reason is that in this case, the difference is reduced. Therefore, the roll between the two wheels is more aligned, as if one of the two were moderately braking, giving you this rough sensation. It must also be said that it gives you much more traction. But well, I hope you appreciated our travel as I did, but now it's time to take a narrower look at the final result of all of this hard work, this determination, and the expertise made in Modena. Made in Modena. It all started out from a sketch on a whiteboard, then an iconic engine was manufactured, and now, here we are, to observe the final development phase of this project, or better said, the production of the first Maserati MC20. We find ourselves in Modena, in Ciro Menotti Road. In via Ciro Menotti. The whole plant has been reorganized to manufacture the Maserati MC20 with seven new bodywork areas and 22 assembly areas, plus the water-based painting station and a testing line with eight working stations. This is a tangible investment, a real innovation in terms of paint, but also in terms of the people working on it. Know-how. Here we don't hire unskilled workers, but real specialists who know how to manufacture a high-quality product. 
in every working station. Thanks to this contribution, we'll witness the creation of this new supercar, 100% made in Modena. The car is now a coupe with a combustion engine. Its convertible version with the electric powertrain is coming soon. OK, let's take this very seriously. I'm starting my pedometer to walk along the MC20's life, literally from its carbon cradle to the road. As previously mentioned, the first working area in which this Maserati comes to life is the bodywork section, thoroughly shown and explained by technicians. Here, clamps are attached to the 107 kilogram car body. Both the front and rear aluminium frames are hooked to the clamps, and the 27 kilogram roof is assembled in one of the next working stations, right before front and rear doors and the mudguard. Observing this process is particularly interesting and fascinating because so much of it is done manually. The extrusion of the glue will be fundamental for the structural stability of the body. Well, the glue dries in this working station because once this structural adhesive has been applied, some fastening down will be performed mechanically, allowing the car to move on to the next phase of production. Every step has a specific processing time, also known as tact time, an evolving time that will help the MC20 reach the production goal of six cars every day. The pace increase won't affect the high-level construction quality of the Trident supercar, meticulously proven in the metrology room that daily controls both finished cars, randomly selected from the production line, but also subgroups, namely components from external suppliers, for example, to test that the assembly degree initially agreed stays unvaried in time, thus avoiding modifications in tolerance or changes to given material specifications. After seven hours and seven stations, well, yes, one hour for each station, the car body is ready to be painted. Ora però. It's now time to leave out the primer layer we've had in the bodywork phase and to understand what happens in the brand new paint lab, an area of four stages whereby the first is the masking. Of course, the masking stage is very manual. This one, actually, people have to completely mask off the areas where we don't want any paint because the carbon car body remains visible as well as the front frame and the rear frame, which have to be shielded from the paint. This activity is carried out primarily by hand and it allows us to preserve the carbon part that will remain visible to the client. As you can see, all details such as the gas cap, rear view mirrors, handles, wings, sensors, not to mention the bumpers of course, are ready to be painted along with the car body. Hence in the very same conditions, so to ensure a perfectly uniform paint on all the details. The masking is also applied to the roof, as in this case, should it be an example with the optional black roof, hence previously painted. Now, after accurately cleaning the car body and the components from any possible impurity, let's spray some humour by giving colour to the day thanks to a couple of tireless employees. We had this idea because we tried to avoid having people inside the cabin, so we had to come up with some solutions. We adopted these two collaborative robots. This one opens and the other sprays, but we couldn't spray the doors because the robot couldn't reach the other side even though we have a plank that moves them up and down. So we had to come up with another solution. We installed stabilists like seagull wings below the doors with a weight control system that allows the robot to autonomously open the door on the same side, paint, and close it again all alone. Otherwise, we would have been forced to let an operator in to open the door and let the robot work. And this would have been very hard. And how long are these phases? We are currently reducing the time, but it takes around 15 minutes on average. The robot's now applying the first layer, Daring White. It's a three-stage paint, and the robot will apply the second layer after the flash-off, and then we'll apply a matte resin. The robots are equipped with two guns, which allows us to have one single cabin. With the first gun, we paint the first layer, and with the second gun, we apply the resin. With the arrival of the MC-20, space in the paint cabin has been uniquely reinterpreted. In fact, there aren't many other examples worldwide where the car body can proceed by entering the oven for the flash-off of the first layer at 85 degrees Celsius to get back then and repeat the process after the cooling off phase. And this occurs up to two more times up to the resin application with minor changes according to the chosen watercolour. That, notwithstanding with the many out-of-series colours, foresees six shades, 
Enigmatic Black, Winning Red, Genius Yellow, Infinite Blue, Mysterious Grey, and not to mention the colour applied to the car we've been following so far, Daring White. With this shade, after the approval, the car body goes back to the assembly stations where among the other stages there will be a truly moving phase to deeply enjoy. Make sure you have your handkerchiefs for your tears. This is indeed one of the most moving moments of the entire assembly process. I could imagine it since the very first moment when I met the Nettuno. But seeing the engine matching, joining, marrying the car body, well it's touching. I can't find any other words. For the old models, we used to do, let's say, a so-called wedding. So from the bottom to the top, we would integrate the engine with the car chassis and the entire transmission system. However, we now use another process. The engine is integrated from above in the back part with a 30 degree incline. In this phase, we proceed slowly and insert it, and then we take it back to the final step in a horizontal position. So this is something new. No other car is assembled this way. The tact time defines the pace, although some stages may be more exciting than others. The MC20s you'll see on the line are being defined in their details, thus showing the choices made by a specific client in terms of colour and customization. This is clear from the car interior and specifically in the station dedicated to the assembly of the dashboard and the seats. And if components like the springs, the shock absorbers and the Brembo brakes are the same for all vehicles as the Maserati logo after all, the design of the rims can reflect your preference. But here's a tip for you, wait for the last assembly stations where the MC20 will start revealing its right perspective and above all, its actual height. If you think that only a few meters back, the wheels of the MC20 here in production have touched the tarmac for only the first time, thus leaving the platform, then it's right to say that the best is yet to come. Given that in the next station, we'll hear the Natuno singing and the first dynamic test starts soon. Cars leaving the assembly line have to pass some trials before the functional testing. These stations verify physically the hold of the previous assembled components. This is a further quality control but also a relevant check for the car's safety before driving a newly produced MC20 model on the roads of Modena. For example, this setup is exposed to stress tests on the vibrant test bench that shall introduce suspension settlement which will be adjusted later. Further, the testing line continues with electrical checks and the roller bench where, among others, the ABS functioning is tested, along with transmission, propellers and eventually the water test to finally enjoy the roads in Montale Rangon, Castelvetro and Puglianello. When the car comes out of the plant, we have around two or two and a half hours for our first road test, going for about 50 or so miles. Here, we have to assess any aspect of the car that could be noticed or perhaps criticized by the client. The client might need a week or a month to find a flaw, for example, as I said before, a, a glass swish. We have to examine and assess <clears throat> We have to examine and assess everything in about an hour and a half on the road on a dynamic route plus an additional hour, hour and a half for static and functional checks where we evaluate each component that may attract the client's attention. That could be windows moving, a door opening, the hood, any other element, everything. But to grasp how each employee at Maserati feels of being part of the project and let's say personally attached to their own territory. To this brand new thoroughbred car from Modena, and well before to the Trident, listen to Ellis. And then if you're brave enough, come back to me and tell me it's just a coincidence. Well, I don't believe it. You know, MC20 was presented exactly on the day I was hired at Maserati. I was hired on September 9th, 1991. MC20 was presented on September 9th, 2020. And coincidentally, it's also my birthday. You really bond with this car. The final testing takes the MC20 to the finishing lab, where the car is put under the microscope of the experts who examine the car from top to bottom, all across its length in search of any kind of flaw. Even the tiniest one, which is not visible to the careful client's eye, it's here spotted and fixed, even if some paints can make things 
a little more difficult. Let's say that in 17 years, I've seen all sorts of things. Yeah, for sure we have some colors and shades that are harder to fix if compared to others. Let's say that in 17 years, I've seen all sorts of things. Yeah, for sure we have some colors and shades that are harder to fix if compared to others, pastel or metallic colors. For example, we have here a really daring white car with matte transparency, which is much harder to treat. I've experienced it in a few days, however the production process from the order to the delivery of this dream car takes about six weeks, a time long enough to nestle in this new Maserati all technology, craftsmanship, quality and the know-how that here in Moderna defines their production along with unquestionable passion. Our journey to illustrate the development of the MC20 ends up here. But this means that the life of this supercar from Modena only begins now. For this model and all those that will go through these stations, ready to make their owners proud. All thanks to the Natuno. Also to shout to the world that a new Maserati era has begun.